No. Let's go. All right. Please be. Okay. Hey, Tommy, you've played uh, villains before. And uh, I was just thinking back when you were on One Life to Live, you were playing a good guy who suddenly became a villain. Now, why did they do that to your character? Well, because I quit, and they wanted to depopularize the, the uh, characters uh, before, uh, you know, during the two weeks notice that I had to give. You know, I quit on one day, but I had to stay because you had to give them two weeks notice. So that they had, uh, you know, ten show days to um, villainize the character. Was that a welcome change of pace for you to suddenly be a bad guy like that? No, it was a welcome change of pace to get off that soap. Now, a question about uh, recognition, uh, different projects throughout your career. When you were in, on the soap opera, mm -hmm. were you ever perplexed at the way people would react to you for, for that? Um, no. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm always per perplexed uh, about uh, when I, when I go out into um, the public, I, I don't spend uh, much time in public. I'm either on a movie set or I'm on uh, one of two cattle ranches or in, in re rather remote parts of Texas. And I don't go to town very often. Uh, at that time, I lived in New York City. The time you're talking about the soap opera, that would have been in the starting about 1970. That's when I went to work on that soap. And um, I'd really done nothing with, uh, until then other than work on plays and in repertory companies. And I, I remember uh, we lived on 86th Street, the corner of 86th Street and Broadway. And I remember going downstairs from this apartment, walking across Broadway to buy a quart of milk. And uh, on the way back, I saw a lady crossing the street, and as we met in the little island there in, in the middle of Broadway, her face lit up and she put her uh, hands on her hips and looked at me and said something very enthusiastic uh, in, in Italian, <laughs> the last word of which was, Televisione! <laughs> And um, <laughs> that perplexed me. I was, I'd only done three days of work on a soap, and, and already um, perfect strangers were talking to me on the street, and I haven't gotten used to it um, yet. Now, Tom, I've always been interested in uh, when actors are coming up in their career, the advice they get from other actors. Uh, I had the great honor of interviewing uh, Carol Channing recently. Now, people like Carol Channing and Zero Mostel when you were doing theater, yeah. and what do they uh, teach you and did you learn a lot from people like that? Zero um, said, um, don't put in too soon, don't take out too soon. <laughs> and that was a very important day for me when, when I learned the meaning of that. Okay. You know, another person you worked with early in your film career on the Betsy was Laurence Olivier. Yeah. Now, I know it was toward the end of his career, but was that something that was pretty intimidating for you to work with him? Um, the greatest actor of the 20th century? No, not, not intimidating. Uh, he's very gen he w w was a very generous man, okay. an elegant man, perfect gentleman, and uh, kind man, uh, in my experience. Uh, it was uh, a real privilege to uh, sit at his feet. Well, did you ever find yourself just asking him for advice or talking about your career, what yeah. you wanted to do, and, yeah. and, and what you talk about? I, I remember telling him that uh, I was worried about not having done a play for, uh, you know, I'd been five years and I hadn't done a play. And um, I just sort of mentioned it to him. He said, my dear boy, don't whine. You won't forget how. Hey. So I, 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 I never whined again. <laughs> well, I mean, you went through all the struggles, uh, the struggles of an actor to to achieve, you know, recognition. When these days, when you meet aspiring actors, does that, does that ever happen that you're at a restaurant and there's a valet or, or a waiter that comes up to you and says, oh, you know, Mr. Jones, you know, I'm an actor. You know, what advice can you offer me? And, and how strange is that for you when that happens? No, that happens all the time, and I'm, I'm. Uh, that's, that's fine. You know, I, I don't mind talking to young uh, people who are interested in the theater or movies. 
So what, what kind of advice? What, what's the, your standard response? My standard response is go to the theater if you want to be an actor um, and stay there. Um, it, even if you have to nail canvas onto flats, even, even if you have to sweep up, even if you have to be an usher, uh, go to the theater and participate to whatever extent you can and make yourself useful. Uh, the other thing I say is um, read lots of books all the time and understand them. And, um, and the other thing I say is be sure uh, within yourself that you can entirely abandon any need for financial or emotional security because you're not going to get it. Those are the, those are the things that I uh, try to point out.